What battle are you currently fighting? Uh, chances are you are fighting some sort of battle. Now, there are two ways we can go about fighting this battle. Now, we can uh, fight this battle with our own pride, our strength, our, our resources, our own understanding, you know, with things like gossip, getting even, putting others down, or any number of ways. Or we can opt for Paul's battle plan as laid out in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. So battles are inevitable, but what is not inevitable is how we will go about fighting them. So let's see what Paul has to say, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So let's first recognize that most battles take place in our minds, in our thought life. If we win the battle in our thought life, most likely everything else will fall into place. The converse is also true. If I'm defeated in my thought life, my actions will follow. For instance, I can't fantasize about how I'm going to get even with someone in my mind and not expect my actions to follow suit. We can often be far too passive with what we allow our minds to both take in and then with what we allow to take up a residence within our minds. Notice verse 5, Paul says, I bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So Paul bringing his thought life into subjection to Christ was not a passive, lackadaisical approach, but rather a very active one. In any battle, you want the top weapons. Now, we may think our tactics are most effective, yet Paul has better and stronger weapons at his disposal. His weapons have power to destroy strongholds. In this time, strongholds were impenetrable cities. Paul is saying that the gospel can destroy strongholds that worldly weapons can't. One commentator said that Paul's language of destruction here is not merely about winning arguments or debates. He means something far more. His weapons destroy the way people think. They demolish their sinful thought patterns, the mental structures by which they live in opposition to God. But Paul is referencing citadels of sin in our lives, every high thing, every haughty thought, every action that forms a barrier to the knowledge of living with God. And so just to think about a couple questions, what battle are you currently attempting to fight with the wrong weapon? You see, the weapon of a gospel, the weapon of God's word, the weapon of prayer have power to tear down strongholds that no human weapon has the power to. And so I want to encourage you to switch the source of your weaponry from self-empowered to God-empowered.